Today, I'm talking to you all about Rebecca Sugar's favorite character, the one and only Starchild himself. No, not that Starchild. Talk about Steven's dad. We'll be going over his history, what he's brought to the series, and his rad new fusion. I'm Chris Carr. Here's your crash course in Greg Universe. Before we dive in, I want to give a shout out to everyone donating on Patreon, especially our super nerd sponsor of the day and friend of the show, John Carmack. Thanks to heroes like them, we get to keep talking jams and binge and tunes. If you want to pitch in, see if a donation tier works for you. We'll thank you with shout out, swag, and more for your generosity. If swag is all you're after, go ahead and click that Tee Public link down in the description. They have all the Steven Universe merch your little heart could desire. On to Mr. Universe! Before the start of our story with Steven began, a young musician named Greg DeMaio was working towards his goal of becoming a rock god. He had dropped out of community college, changed his name to Mr. Universe, got a van to tour and live in, and even got himself a manager. This guy, Marty, though, would prove to be a pretty awful dude. But we'll get to the one decent career move he made for Greg in a bit. Oh, and side quest. In the episode Story for Steven, we see Marty chilling in the back of the Universe van with Vidalia. And Marty and Onion have that same tuft of hair, so my conspiracy theory of the day is that Marty is Onion's dad. But I'm here to talk about Greg. Greg came to Beach City to perform a concert. The only person to show up to that show, though, was Rose Quartz. The two shared an instant connection. So much so, that Greg decided to bail on his gig in Empire City so he could stay and see what could happen with Rose. This obviously did not sit well with Pearl, and vying for Rose's attention would be the root of animosity between she and Greg. Even after dating Rose for several months, Pearl would antagonize Greg about how Rose only found him to be an interesting plaything, but with being human, and that they would never truly connect since they couldn't fuse. This led to Greg attempting to do a fusion dance with Rose, which Rose just laughed at. Greg demanded to know if Rose even respected him, and the two finally had a serious conversation about what their relationship was and what they meant to each other. Look, these last few months have been great. Oh, yes. But I'm getting a little worried about the future. Oh, just ask Garnet. DTR. Ah, it's the all exclusivity. Are you my girlfriend talk? It's never not weird, y'all. It's probably weirder if you're trying to figure that out with an alien, though. In this case, they didn't really decide to put a label on it, but to simply treat each other as equals. Seems obvious, but hey, treat people how you want to be treated and respect them. It's a good lesson. These two seem to be good for one another. Rose confided in Greg that what she loved so much about humans was that they were constantly growing and changing, whereas gems stayed the same forever. And this helped Greg realize that he needed to become more responsible and stop relying on those around him so much. So he got a job at the car wash, which he would eventually come to own. The two were together for a few years when Rose decided that she wanted to have a baby with Greg despite knowing that this sort of fusion would mean sacrificing her own physical form. When Stephen was born, and thus Rose was no longer with them, he and Greg lived in Vidalia's house while she was away with family. Greg was mourning Rose, but the Crystal Gems didn't seem to understand she was gone and that Stephen was an entirely separate entity. Once that finally hit them, all four decided to raise this half-human, half-gem boy together. Stephen would live with Greg for several years, and Greg even built their house that connected to the Crystal Temple. Once it was built, Stephen moved in to train with the Gems, but Greg continued to be extremely involved in his son's life. And one of my favorite things about this dynamic of three female identifying characters and this one man, who may appear schlubby or lazy, is that Greg is the one who understands raising a child. He's the only one who is immediately able to nurture Stephen. He's incredibly in touch with his emotions and raises his son to be kind, generous, and thoughtful. Greg is so much of why Steven is the great guy we come to know and love. And that's what I think Greg's power is, to love and connect with those around him, whether it's through his music, like how he initially connected with Rose, or with his openness about his feelings, like how he connected with Blue Diamond through their grief. Greg doesn't shy away from letting those around him know how he feels. Greg even gives us the best catchphrase of the series. If every pork chop were perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs. This is a beautiful sentiment, and also really nails home that hot dogs are Greg's favorite food. All this isn't to say that Greg is void of self-doubt or insecurities. He said himself that he wasn't particularly confident with the idea of raising a child as unique as Stephen by himself. Not feeling like he can offer much to his special child gives him some self-confidence issues. This doesn't stop him from trying to help and prove his worth, though. He tries to be a responsible parent who's capable of protecting his child. Greg chooses to avoid magical, gem-oriented situations unless Stephen specifically asks for him to help. And honestly, he seems a little uncomfortable around gem powers, which he calls magic stuff. He seems to have bad memories associated with gem powers, most notably shape-shifting, which has led many viewers to assume perhaps Amethyst would shift into Rose from time to time, something that would obviously hurt Greg. Do you think that also has anything to do with um, Pearl shifting into 
rose. Oh, like the projections and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Because Pearl meant to hurt Greg. I think at the beginning of all of this too, they all just kind of didn't understand, one, how Rose was gone. how And then it was, oh, this is immediately Greg's fault. Greg seems to have the hardest time dealing with this because we view Rose still with Steven kind of in a way. Yeah. And while Greg understands that and gets to have a kid now, he is always so sad. Like throughout the entire series, he is just devastated by this. And so I think a lot of what the gems did because they don't understand social graces in like a human way, really messes them up. Cause yeah, if you have a power to shape shift, you're gonna like do that to connect with your loved one or like project them and watch that thing. But if you're, you know, a sad ex musician, you're just gonna hoard all your and cry in your van. Yeah. As musicians. Yeah, you're gonna write a new album about it. Or about Lapis Lazuli, I don't know, I don't understand that one. What? Yeah, there's a reference that he's working on an album called Water Witch, which is like from the cover art, it looks like it's just about Lapis. I think maybe it's just cause that's pretty metal looking. Like, oh, she controls water, ah. And though he is open with his feelings, he's still deeply affected by Rose being gone. He's unwilling to let go of the past which seems to have manifested into a hoarding issue. We see in the episode Maximum Capacity that Greg seems to be incapable of throwing anything away. He has to work really hard to get to a place where he can let these things go. Greg also serves as the financial caretaker of our heroes. He pays for everyone's expenses since the gems don't have jobs. This is thanks to the car wash he owns and later, thanks to Marty, that douche nozzle, selling one of Greg's songs to a burger company that uses it as their jingle, making Mr. Greg one wealthy beach bum. Oh, plus he bankrolled Sadie Killer and the suspects. Greg's gone through a lot in this series. Losing the love of his life, raising a son, being kidnapped and taken to a human zoo. You know, that old chestnut. The two most defining moments of recent history though, will be that horrid fusion bluebird kidnapping him, leading him to cutting off his own luscious locks and him finally fusing. First, we gotta talk about that hack job Greg did to his zoo. I lost it when Greg cut his hair. I took a lap around the apartment. That hair was basically another character on the show. At the very least, it was an extension of Greg. Making the sacrifice the emotional climax of the episode Bluebird was a brilliant move, just ugh. Oh. So let's talk about what that sacrifice symbolically means. Hair has long been a symbol of strength and virility, and long flowing hair is usually used to depict freedom and a laid back, relaxed attitude. That's definitely our uke playing dad. And while he may not be a muscly man, he definitely has a lot of emotional strength. In literature and media, when a character cuts off their hair, it's usually to symbolize some sort of rite of passage or character growth. Think Mulan getting ready to go off to war in her father's place. Hair is also heavily associated with power in great works of literature like Their Eyes Were Watching God. In the Bible, Samson loses all of his strength when Delilah cuts his hair. But Greg cut off his own hair. So what does chopping your own locks mean? Parting with hair voluntarily usually is about power shifts. In dreams, chopping off one's own hair can be symbolic of change and control in one's life. It also has religious ties. The cutting of one's own hair is part of Buddhism. It's something Siddhartha himself did early on in his path to enlightenment. In Native American and Asian cultures, the cutting of one's own hair could serve as an act of grief, disgrace, or rebellion. So obviously the biggest thing Greg was doing here was to get away from Bluebird. But I think we can expect this new look to greatly affect Greg. Just think about your own life. If you undergo a drastic physical change, you're often treated differently. I'm wondering if Greg is going to lose some of his rock star mojo with the loss of his due, or if he'll start being treated differently by the gems and the other citizens of Beach City. Furthermore, will losing his hair affect the appearance of his fusion? Which brings us to Steg. In Steven Universe, the movie, Greg is able to fuse with his son, Steven. This proved once again, that fusions are based on love of any kind and a deep trust and understanding of the other person. It's also bittersweet in that he, in a way, is finally fusing with Rose in a traditional gem sense. Stag, as the fusion became to be called, is a tall, muscly fusion with four arms who rocks a pomodoro, an eight pack, and a belly button gemstone. You'll note that he wears Steven sandals and a shirt in a kind of hulked out fashion and Greg's shorts. Let's talk about that hair for a second. So in anime, the pompadour is this sort of trope or metaphor for masculinity. So this hair choice enforces this sort of masculine power idea especially since Steg is the first 100% male fusion in the series and the second to use male pronouns. The hairdo was also made famous by Elvis Presley, who possibly could have inspired Steg's sweet dance moves since Homie does a lot of hip thrusts and gyrations. And we don't know much about Steg as of this recording. In his musical number, he appears to be a smooth operator who's positive and laid back. 
we can assume he has your standard set of gem abilities, like agility and strength, but he also appears to have a sort of descent regulation power, meaning he can slowly descend from the air, similar to Steven. We also see him levitate himself and others with music. So perhaps that's a mix of Steven's powers with Greg's ability to connect with others through performing. Whether it's Steg himself levitating or someone else, the person or persons floating are surrounded by a pink aura. In an interview with creator Rebecca Sugar, she said that Steg was originally going to be called Mr. Multiverse and would appear in a Battle of the Bands episode. This idea obviously was scrapped, but her core concept of the fusion remained intact. Sugar said she wanted this fusion to be a combination of, quote, Stephen and Greg's wonderful father-son, rock star savant relationship. She went on to say that Steg is, quote, the ultimate ally who has all of Greg's emotional intuition and free spirit and all of Steven's compassion. The support that Steven gets from Greg is so grounding for him, and that character is just in a perfect position to do that for others, to just radiate support and confidence. See, I told you I knew Greg's superpower. Of course, y'all, I wanna know what you think of Greg and Steg. Do you think we'll hear any of Greg's next album, Water Witch and Steven Universe Future? Let me know about your takes on the character in the comments below. Thanks again to all of our supporters on Patreon, TeePublic, and any of you who just stumbled here while searching for Steven Universe stuff. For more videos, just click to the left. Thanks for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.